the Elite Four are an interesting bunch of characters. It's rare that a video game will throw a brand new character at you when you're 95% of the way through it, much less four new ones. But Pokemon's Elite Four always challenges the game to make these characters likable or interesting based on only a few lines of dialogue, physical appearance, and team composition. That's probably why a majority of the Elite Four's members are actually pretty forgettable. But I think that's what causes the ones that stand out the most to do so. The Elite Four members that succeed in winning the player over are the ones we end up respecting and remembering as truly epic video game bosses and Pokemon trainers. So now I'd like to share with you guys what Elite Four members had the biggest impact on me, a trainer who's been playing since Generation 1. And I might include champions in this, I might not, I don't know. Number 5! Lorelei. For those of us who started Pokemon with Generation 1 or even Fire Red and Leaf Green, who could forget the very first moment they set foot in Lorelei's chamber? The game spent all this time hyping up the Elite Four, and finally, there you were. This wasn't like a gym. There were no obstacles, no other trainers, just a square room, you and your opponent. But that's not all that makes Lorelei special. She's actually a little intimidating when you're playing through the game for the first time at a young age. After fighting your way through all these gym leaders with silly cartoony themes, you find yourself face to face with this grown ass woman who's pretty, sophisticated, and confident, who promises to freeze you solid with her ice types. It's like when you're in elementary school and you piss off a librarian and you have no idea what you did wrong because you're just a stupid kid that doesn't know anything. That's how Lorelei makes you feel. You know, maybe that's just me. I probably pissed off more librarians than most children, but that's not the point. Lorelei was given the heavy, heavy task of setting a standard for every single Elite Four member to come after her. She had to have enough of an impact on you to make sure you knew the Elite Four were going to be strong and worth taking seriously, and that's why she's cool in my eyes. Number four! Drake. This guy. Can you possibly get any cooler than Drake? This is exactly what I want to look like when I'm 60. If I'm not chilling out on a boat shirtless wearing a badass coat and captain's hat raising an all-dragon team, then my life has not gone as planned. In all seriousness though, this dude is legit. The name, the look, the team, everything about this guy is cool as shit. If you want to talk memorable Elite Four members, this guy takes the cake. I mean, honestly, who doesn't think dragons are awesome? If you don't think dragons are awesome, I'm just gonna have to ask you to leave. I know most of his team is horribly, horribly allergic to Ice Beam, but being fourth in the Hoenn Elite Four, you're probably already pretty softened up and his dragons will, without a doubt, take a few good chunks out of your team your first time fighting him. Number three, Karen. Oh, Karen. You stole my heart over a decade ago and have yet to release me from your grasp. Karen is like Lorelei on steroids. Stronger, prettier, scarier. It's a lot for a guy to handle, but enough of that. Karen is one seriously likable and memorable trainer. Dark-type was first introduced in Generation 2, and while there was no Dark-type gym, there was a Dark Elite 4 trainer, and that was Karen. At first, her dialogue makes her come off very condescendingly. She thinks it's amusing when she meets you, as if she knew you were on your way and you're so much less impressive than what she was expecting. But it's what Karen says when you defeat her that has earned her a spot on this list. Strong Pokemon, weak Pokemon, that is only the selfish perception of people. Truly skilled trainers should try to win with their favorites. I like your style. You understand what's important. I could not agree more with that. I think it's so important for people not to lose sight of this concept in our crazy modern metagame full of tier lists and EV training. When you first played through Pokemon, what did your team consist of? Shit you thought was cool. End of story. Karen will always be a constant reminder of why we enjoyed Pokemon in the first place. Also, um, hotty! Number two! Flint. If I could be best friends with anyone in the Pokemon world, it would be Flint. They did such an insanely good job making Flint a likable and memorable character in Generation 4 that I absolutely could not wait to actually face him in battle. You ever hear the expression, you don't truly know someone until you fight them? Well, that's how I felt about Flint. He was just this super chill dude who would always casually show up and tell you to help his bro Vulcaner enjoy battle again or some shit, and then casually walk off again. I can only imagine he thought standing around the Pokemon League all day was boring as hell. I honestly don't know why the games don't do this with more members of the Elite Four. Rather than just this random bunch of weirdos that you run into at the very end of the game, why not introduce them early on and make you look forward to fighting them like they did with Flint? Another cool thing about Flint is the fact that he chose to use fire types because of his name. All too often in Pokemon, we get these gym leaders with really asinine names like Berg and Rourke because they use Bug and Rock types. 90% of the time, this is just a stupid pun on Game Freak's part, but the fact that they actually take the time to explain that Flint chose to use fire types because of his name makes his character that much more interesting. Yes, Flint is my 
my favorite Elite Four member, which means that number one is... Number one! Lance. Lance as an Elite Four member, pretty good. Lance as a champion, holy shit! So yeah, I decided to make my number one the only Elite Four member who's also a champion. Say what you will about the other champions, Cynthia, Steven, Blue, sure, they're tough. But the rematch against Lance in Heart Gold and Soul Silver has to be the single toughest Pokemon battle ever. Just to put it into perspective, when you fight the Elite Four after collecting all 16 badges, the difference between Lance's highest level Pokemon and Will's lowest level Pokemon is 17 levels. It took me four freaking ever to finally beat him in the rematch. But he's not just a strong trainer, Lance is so damn cool. First of all, dragons are the shit. Secondly, he's named after a weapon, and just the cape and the red spiky hair, and oh my god, this guy is awesome. From generations 1 through 3, Lance has taught Hyper Beam to literally every single Pokemon he uses. What a psychopath. I love it. He's also got a whole bunch of illegal Pokemon, like a Dragonite that knows Barrier in Generation 1, an Aerodactyl that knows Rock Slide in Generation 2, and two Dragonites below level 55. This guy's nuts. Not to mention the fact that he actually shows up in the game's storyline in Generation 2 and helps you kick Team Rocket's ass. He's really just got everything going for him, and that's why he is the champion of my personal list of the best Elite Four members. Hey, thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, or I'll kill you. Goodbye!